Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here with you, and we are in part two now of Teaching Geography with ArcGIS Online. Right now let's talk about why should we use GIS and why should we even engage students in thinking spatially? Why spatial analysis in education, in other words? Well, here are a few reasons. This doesn't pretend to be the all-being, all-knowing, uh, all-encompassing list of reasons. But there are some that, uh, that really resonate with me and the educators that I've worked with. So, for example, it's tied to real issues, as I've illustrated in part one of this video. Whether it's toxic spills, earthquakes, migration, uh, political unrest, water quality, whatever issues are in your community, your region, your world, uh, a GIS can be used to illustrate, to understand, to make sense of those issues, and to explore the geographic and other implications of those issues. It's also tied well to Bloom's taxonomy, nudging students toward the top of that pyramid, getting them to synthesize, to analyze, to ask questions, deep questions and real questions. It's also very nicely tied to outdoor education, getting students outside on the landscape, even if it's just on your own school campus. I am reminded of a book by Richard Louvre, Last Child in the Woods, makes a strong case for getting students out on the landscape repeatedly and often and while they're young to really make a difference in their lives. And GIS can help them make sense of the data that they've collected out in the field. It's also standards based. You know, most standards, when it comes down to it, is all about using real data and real contexts uh, in an analytical way. And that's what GIS was created to be. It was actually created to be an analytical tool. It's not something we're just making up. It's definitely not something we're just making up for the classroom. It's a real tool that's being used by real people, millions of people all over the world on a daily basis. Why? So they can make effective decisions. It's also inquiry di driven. It's one of those few tools that allows for the, ooh, what if we looked at this area or what if we looked at this particular variable or what if we classified the data in a different way on our map or what if we changed the scale or what if we looked at this uh, same variable but maybe 10 years ago that's the kind of thing that GIS allows you to do a few more reasons GIS is engaging for the same reason I think that maps have long been engaging right for centuries, people have loved maps because they're such rich sources of information. Just think of the amount of information you can get on one map. And as, as, much, as, inform, as, as much information as you can get on a paper map, it multiply that by a thousand. You know, it's said that a, a picture is worth a thousand words, right? Well, a map is like a, a thousand pictures. It's a rich source of information, especially in a digital context in a geographic information system. So you can investigate, and you're using the same tools that professionals use, which is another reason why it's engaging to students. And taking off on that point, it provides excellent career pathways in science, technology, engineering, and math, for, for one thing, STEM education, but in a whole host of fields. You know, GIS, for, for its first few decades, was really, oh, the GIS section, oh, that's down the hall and to the right let's say in a city municipal office or in a uh, federal agency or in a, even in a university. But what I mean by that is that it was important, but it was this particular section that actually, or this group of people that did the GIS stuff for the organization. Nowadays, what it's becoming is an enterprise tool. What I mean by that is that it's used by all kinds of folks as one of the tools on their tool belt, just like using a spreadsheet or just like being able to do statistical analysis or any other kind of core tool that people have. GIS, therefore, is, has spread out from the, that section down the hall to all over an organization, whether that organization is a private industry, a nonprofit organization, uh, a government agency, uh, a university, etc. So it provides excellent career pathways. It's, it's more and more in demand each year. It's also tied very well to native ways of learning and knowing. And perhaps like many of you, I've worked with uh, native groups, indigenous people, Native Americans for one. And um, what, what I've found is that this is very much tied into the holistic uh, ethic that is a part and fundamental to native ways of learning and knowing. 
Well, what I mean by that is that that whole perspective of the earth is connected to the soil, which is connected to the watersheds, which is connected to the climate, which impacts people and how people impact their own environment as well in a converse way. Uh, so the environment affecting people and people affecting the environment. But all of these things tied together at multiple scales. That's the kind of thing that GIS really taps into. That GIS really relies on that kind of holistic thinking. Indeed, that spatial perspective, that holistic perspective, is really uh, quite important to understanding GIS and being able to effectively use GIS. GIS is also a green technology. It's, it's being used to uh, benefit the planet. Everything from elephant habitat to protection over in Africa to uh, citing the best uh, places for wind farms in any country, GIS is actually being used to do that. And finally, uh, although as I said, this isn't the all-encompassing list, it provides excellent community connections. So it, it, it allows students to grapple with and engage in real issues in their own community. For example, citing a skateboard park or rezoning a certain parcel or gosh where is this business uh, supposed to be located and why did these businesses close and what businesses could go in those in those locations or where's the best place for an urban greenway or a new bicycle path or planning for effective growth in the next 20 years so it's really tied to community issues excellent all right so GIS GPS are used all over the world and let me give you a few examples here in Taiwan, I was hanging out with a bunch of really cool students in a middle school. All the middle schools over there have, in Taiwan, have GPS as part of their curriculum. So they're actually going out onto their school property and in their community collecting data. And every high school has GIS. Really quite exciting. That and other stories are highlighted in a new book that I co-authored with a couple of really good colleagues of mine. And it's called The International Perspectives on Teaching and Learning with GIS in Secondary Schools, available from Springer and Amazon. The point is, is that it's not just you and I who are interested in GIS and education. It's actually being used on a daily basis by schools all around the world, and not just secondary schools. Primary schools, universities, community colleges, technical colleges. So it's being used in education. Why? Well, for many of the reasons that I outlined a couple minutes ago. An inquiry-based, hands-on, engaging tool that's highly in demand and that fosters critical thinking. I also want you to think about beyond instruction. GIS is also used in education far beyond instructional uses. For example, it's used by administrators on college campuses. Hey, how are we going to recruit people? Where do we target? potential new students what about campus infrastructure hmm how do we map where all of the fiber optic cable are and the uh, uh, the water lines and the electrical lines and so on how about the hazardous chemicals stored over in the biology lab how do we manage that what about um, things like if there's a, some sort of a campus safety issue at 2 p.m. Where, do we know where all the students are at that any particular time those kinds of things are actually used uh, as well and they use GIS to help manage all of those decisions that need to be made in education administration on a campus as well and thinking about schools in a larger context what about school bus routes how do we figure out where those are and how they can effectively be planned and implemented now my tiny little secret here it's so tiny that you can barely see it it's in this cool caving picture that I took down in New Mexico the tiny little secret is GIS is too good just for geography. Now I know this is a teaching geography with ArcGIS Online presentation, but the point is, is that GIS is too good to just be in the geography departments or geography sections of schools or in the geography discipline. It's, it's just too valuable, folks, so I challenge you as geography educators out there, get this out there. Talk to your history colleagues. Talk to your biology. Talk to your math colleagues. Uh, environmental studies geology, etc. This is a tool that can be used in a variety of different disciplines and it really needs to be. As I mentioned in, the, in part one, GIS helps nudge students toward the top of Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy as I, hear, I have here. Too many O's. Anyway, the point is, is that the students are analyzing, synthesizing, and evaluating. GIS is not just about making pretty maps. In fact, it's not about making pretty maps at all. 
Yeah, you can make some great maps with GIS. You can make some beautiful maps with GIS. And effective maps, and maps that can communicate. But really, GIS is about analyzing the Earth and its people. That's the point of GIS. I love this slide from Larry Cuban's book, Teachers and Machines, because the point is, is that uh, here it is, 1920s, students are using uh, the latest technology of the time. They're up in an airplane. However, I know it's a bit hard to see, the teacher is pointing at a globe. And some of the students, although this one I think has fallen asleep, some of the students are actually looking at the globe and the teacher pointing at the globe. The, the point I want to make here is that the students are not looking out the window, right? They're using a new technology, but they're using it in an old instructional setting. And what we want to do with GIS is not just to use it to make maps, okay? We want to use it to really engage it in a way that's new and innovative. So think about lessons that you do that, um, that actually would add value adding a GIS component or doing it in a GIS environment rather than paper maps or you know coloring paper maps with colored pencils or looking up at an atlas or something like that. Or maybe you don't use maps at all in this particular lesson and you really need to add the spatial component to it because it would really add to the uh, what your goals are in teaching that lesson. That's what we want to do here with geographic information systems. So thanks for being with me here for part two. Stay tuned for part three.